What's going on guys? It's your boy Distant Coder and welcome back to another episode of Know Your Rulings. As usual, I'll be going over the rulings that you guys left in the comment section of my last video for the ruling questions of this video. As always, if you guys want to take part, leave your ruling questions in the comment section of this video and I'll go over those for the rulings of my next video. But without further ado, let's get right into the rulings. Okay, this next question comes to us from the YouTuber JoJo's ASMR and they ask, Hey Coder, I know this is not a legal play, but could you please explain why this interaction is illegal. Player A activates Meteonis Drytron and tributes Meteonis Drytron Draconids from hand. Why can they not summon the same Draconids from the graveyard that they just used as tribute fodder from the hand? So when you are resolving the effect of a ritual spell, effectively the steps that you take when you resolve it is, okay, this ritual spell is now resolving. What is the monster that I want to ritual summon and what are the tributes that I'm going to be tributing to summon said monster? So in that situation, when you are resolving the effect of the ritual spell, you have to pick what monster you're ritual summoning. In this case, you are choosing to ritual summon Meteonis Drytron Draconids. The only issue with that is that you cannot then tribute that Draconids because once you tribute that same Draconids from your hand, the Draconids that is now in the graveyard, even though it's the same physical copy of the card, it is not considered to be the same card so in this situation what would be happening is this would be the same sort of interaction as if you were trying to ritual summon a necros monster from your hand but you want to use that exact same necros monster as the full material you're not allowed to do this because you have selected that monster in your hand to be the monster that you're trying to ritual summon so you can't tribute that exact same monster because if you do that that monster will no longer be that exact same monster in your hand that you have already selected to be the monster you're trying to ritual summon. So in this instance, you cannot tribute the Draconids in your hand in order to then ritual summon that same copy of the Draconids from your graveyard because it's no longer the same monster you were initially selecting as the monster you want to ritual summon. All right, this next ruling question comes to us from Dragos, Paul, and Dre, and they ask, ruling question, my opponent has a Zeus with one material and a Tritron in defense. I have a Zoo Xyz with Whiptail as a material. If I attack the Drytron and use Whiptail to banish it, is it still considered destroyed so as to trigger the effect of Zeus? So in this case, Zeus has the effect that if another card you control is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you get to attach a monster from your deck or extra deck to it as a material. And a Zodiac monster that has Whiptail as a material gains the effect that if it battles an opponent's monster after damage calculation, you banish that monster. In this situation, basically what's going to happen is you have to know the substeps of the damage step. Once you reach after damage calculation, the monster that, that is determined to be destroyed by battle is not yet destroyed and sent to the graveyard. In At this point is when the Whiptail is going to activate its effect to banish the monster that it battled with, so in this case the Drytron monster, and it's only at the end of the damage step that the monster would be destroyed and sent to the graveyard. So in this instance, the Whiptail successfully banishes the Drytron monster before that Drytron monster acts actually gets destroyed. So in this instance, the Zeus will not meet its activation requirement because no card on your field was destroyed by battle or card effect. This is one of those interactions that came up a lot back in 2017 when a card like Bao Baboon was in the format. Um, Bao Baboon's a card that if it itself is destroyed by battle or card effect, it summons another copy of itself from deck. If you attack into a Bao Baboon with a Zodiac that has a Whiptail as a material, it'll banish the Bao Baboon and the Bao Baboon won't be able to activate. All right, this next ruling question comes to us from I Eat A Lot, and they ask, what's the difference between use and activate in terms of how many times that card can be played if it happens to get negated? So there are certain cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that specify that they can only be activated once per turn, and others that specify they can only be used once per turn. Where this is an interesting interaction is when you have cards that negate activations as opposed to cards that negate effects. So for a card that says it can only be activated once per turn, we'll use as an example example, Pot of Desires. If you activate Pot of Desires and your opponent chains Ash Blossom, Ash Blossom negates the effect, not the activation of your card. So in this case, you would not be able to activate a second Pot of Desires. However, if your Pot of Desires was instead met with Solemn Judgment, which negates specifically the activation of the Pot of Desires, you would be allowed to activate a second Pot of Desires. So when it comes to cards that can only be activated, 
activated once per turn, if they specifically have their activation negated, you are allowed to activate a second copy. Now, in the case of cards that say you can only use each effect once per turn, we'll take for example Thunder Dragon Fusion. If you activate Thunder Dragon Fusion and it has either its effects or its activation negated, it will not matter, the effect is still considered to have been used. So in either case, even if the effect or the activation of Thunder Dragon Fusion is negated, you will not be able to use its effect to fusion summon again that turn, even though it had either its effects or its activation negated. Okay, this next ruling question comes to us from Tarek McMaster, and they ask, I have a virtual world ruling question. If I send Yan Yan to the graveyard via the effect of Lulu or Gigi, can it summon itself since the level 3 was summoned after sending Yan Yan? So the important thing to memorize about this is that in Gigi or Lulu's text, it'll say, send a card with a different type from your deck to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon this card from your hand. In this instance, what this means is that effects that are uh, written as and if you do in their text are considered by the game as happening simultaneously. So even though you technically send the Nyan Nyan to the graveyard before summoning the GG from your hand, the game recognizes the send from deck and the summon from hand as being a simultaneous action due to the conjunction and if you do. So for this reason, the Nyan Nyan was not in the graveyard at the moment at which the GG was summoned because they're considered to be simultaneous. So for this reason, if you send the Nyan Nyan via the effect of uh, GG or Lulu, you will not be able to summon the Nyan Nyan on resolution of that effect. Okay, this next ruling question comes to us from Banish for Cost, and they ask, Yes, hello Mr. Coder. My question is if my opponent declares an attack with Zodiac Borbo and I activate infinite impermanence in response, does a redeclare occur or can they still make Zeus after? So basically in this situation, you have a Zodiac Borbo that is attacking directly. We'll assume that you control monsters, your opponent is attacking you directly with their Borbo. In response to their attack declaration, you activate your set infinite impermanence, targeting the Borbo to negate its effects. After the inf infinite impermanence successfully negates the effects of the Borbo, there will be a replay that is going to occur because the number of legal attack targets for the Zodiac Borbo has changed. Maybe before they could attack one of your two monsters and they also had the option to attack you directly. Now they no longer have that option. So the number of attack targets that were legal for Bar Borbo has changed. So in this instance, a replay does occur and the opponent is allowed to either decide to attack one of your two monsters or they can decide to cancel their attack. Now, uh, they would not be able to make Zeus in the main phase two if they canceled their attack because a monster is only to consider uh, only considered to have battled if it reaches damage calculation. So in this case, they wouldn't be able to make Zeus and a replay would occur for their Zodiac Borbo. Okay, this next ruling question comes to us from Diables Ryan and they ask, Hi Coder, whether Washer attacks Shizuku can Ray trigger? So in this instance, I assume the prank is whether Washer is attacking over Shizuku, destroying it by battle, and you want to know if you're allowed to activate the Ray on the destruction of the Shizuku. So in this case, the prank is whether Washer has the effect that says if a prank kids monster attacks your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step so in this instance basically what would happen is that the weather washer will attack over the shizuku the shizuku will be destroyed and then the ray would meet its activation requirement in the damage step specifically during the end of the damage step however the effect of prank kids weather washer that prevents your opponent from activating effects until the end of the damage step essentially means that until the damage step step is completely over, your opponent is not allowed to activate any cards or effects. So in this instance, the ray would not be allowed to trigger because of the effect of the prank is weather washer, preventing the activation of ray's effect until the damage step has fully concluded. So anyways, guys, that was it for this episode of Know Your Rulings. I hope you guys learned something new and don't forget to leave your ruling questions in the comment section of this video so I can go over those for the ruling questions of my next video. So anyways, guys, I appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.